My name is Dale Smith. A lot of people know me by Coach Valley. I have a business called House of Movement and I teach parkour to kids and adults like uh, age three all the way to my eldest client is 66. This is World Chase Tag. This is a massive one. GNF, the title favorite, now have to take on the very impressive Hollywood three runners. Athletes, ready! So World Chase Tag is basically professional tag. And you have some of the best parkour athletes in the world and they formulate these teams. I participate on a team called Hollywood Freerunners. They're based out of California. They're a group of stuntmen. I competed for the first time two years ago on this team. My buddy of mine named Paul Darnell, a stuntman for Superman. And uh, he called me and he was like, hey, I see that you're still training in parkour and you look really good. He was like, how would you like to partake on a, a professional tag team. And I was like, what? We competed in the first uh, US World Chase Tag competition. This was on ESPN, yes. My beginning stages in parkour, it started with watching anime, Dragon Ball Z, Jackie Chan, James Bond. And I was like, you know, I see myself as the guy running across the rooftop. I wanted to be like that guy. So I had just got out of group home and my mother, she didn't want me to go to jail or she didn't want me to be dead. So she said, all right, we got to move from the city. So we ended up moving to a country. And I remember I was living in this tiny little trailer there were holes all in the floor. There was not a door on the bathroom. My room was, it felt like a tiny closet. My brother had a tiny room, no door. And my mother, she had to sleep on the couch. And I remember watching this guy do a backflip. And uh, I said to myself, if he has flesh and blood the same as I do, then one day I have skills like him. And so that was the day I began training. My mother, she went out and to work and I had this little mattress that I was sleeping on, like that was on the floor. And I would drag it out of the trailer and I would bring it outside. And I remember the first time I ever landed my standing back tuck. So as a coach, the most important thing to me is influencing kids in a way in which they can make a decision that is productive to themselves and also to society. Because as a child, I remember growing up and all of my influences I felt like were pushing me down the wrong path. Choosing the right people, I feel like is the most important thing uh, for a person's success on this planet. Because the people that you spend time with, you become like those people. So growing up, I'm adopted and starting in elementary school, I never felt like I fed in at all, actually. No one like navigated towards me to, to say, hey, let's hang out, let's be friends, let's do this thing. Like, I never had a friend. I was very violent as a young kid. I had a, a philosophy that if anyone harmed me, I, I harmed them. Uh, that was the only way. Like as I got older, found myself doing a lot of like things that were like not moral. I went into people's houses, I took things that didn't belong to me, I went into people's cars, got involved with gangs, got involved with drugs. I was actually uh, expelled from seventh grade and I was uh, shipped to a, uh, a psych hospital. And again, just growing up, feeling like I could never be successful in anything, I couldn't read, I couldn't write, I couldn't spell. I had this idea that we're not here that long. Like life is but a vapor. 
What do I want to be remembered for? How have I impacted the world? My focus should be becoming a better version of myself so I can help as many people as possible. And uh, that's my driving force. I remember as a child going to this Baptist church. I don't remember any of the messages outside of one uh, that the pastor talked about and it had to do with faith. I just remember walking down the aisle. I remember I was crying and uh, I was holding on to the the chairs as I was going down because it was like, you know, it was that type of experience. I accepted Christ and uh, as a black male, I had a, very, a lot of friends that would speak to me and they would say things like, who gave you that, that white book? Like they would say, Where did, what spirituality did you have, you know, before the slave master gave you that book? It made me question. You know, I was thinking, all right, why did, why did I accept this? Who is this? But then I had this question. I'm like, all right, if I'm really gonna follow this Christianity, then I need to study deep. And I began to study every religion, all the conspiracies that had to do with Christianity. But the thing that was most significant to me that stood out in the Christian worldview was the good news. Like, I imagine someone locked in these, like, a prison cell. They don't know how they got there. They blindfolded, they got shackles on, and they can't get themselves out of that situation. It takes a person from the outside to unlock that door and to take out the shackles, take out the blindfolders off, and now you know where you are, but you also know you didn't save yourself. In the beginning, it was like, dang, like, no matter what in life, I'm always messing up, I'm always falling, I'm gonna stand before this guy and he's gonna be like this, 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 all these, these errors. But the truth is, again, th there was only one person who lived that never sinned. His name is Jesus. All of us are gonna fall, we're all gonna make mistakes. So in parkour, there's this thing called ukimi. Ukimi means body safe. The point of it is to help you learn how to fall safely. And uh, I find that a lot of people when they fall and they hurt themselves is because they never had that experience. And so what my job to do as a, a parkour instructor is to put people in experiences where they can fall safely so that when they do fall, they've already been in that experience you know, it's not anything that's gonna keep that person down, but they'll be able to fall safely through that experience. In our Christian walk, you know, with our relationship with God, he, he's saying, you're gonna fall, but now you can fall safely. You know, I'm gonna make a way for you, even when you do fall. The best way to fall into God's arms is to trust that he's gonna catch you. That's it. He made everything, everything belongs to him. Everything is held together by his power. Like, it's literally a trust fall, is what it is. Yeah, I was once asked a question by a, a parkour athlete that was questioning my Christianity. He was like, when you say by faith you did that jump, what do you mean by that? Like, how can you have blind faith? I was like, I had the faith because I was out practicing for hours, weeks, months, years. That's why I have the faith that I have. It's not a blind leap. I'm not just gonna run and jump to a, this thing that's wobbly because, you know, I hope I'm gonna make it there. I have like, experience before I actually get to this big jump. So with God, it's, it's the exact same thing. Like he took me through baby trials to show me that he's here with me and he's for me. And like, there's no doubt in my heart. Again, when I think about hope, like it's just like this idea that everything's gonna be okay. And uh, as long as I'm meditating and thinking about that, no matter what's happening in my life, there's peace. I, th I think that's it. I think that wraps it up. I think that's good.